So today, I'm kind of like by myself. Emily's at like a baby shower. It's not that I didn't want to go. It's not that I didn't, I don't like babies. I love, I love babies. I mean, who doesn't like babies? I just had a lot to do today. Today's projects consist of, I'm not 100% sure. Like, there's a lot to do. But first off, it's this piece. And this piece is what I believe to be the last piece to get that Miata running again. I've changed the clutch, and when I changed the clutch, I should've did the flywheel, but I didn't do the flywheel, so I just did the flywheel, and it's still not giving me all the pressure that I need, so I think this is the part that's gonna fix it. So, let's try, try it out. New part, so much shinier. That thing is filthy. It needs a nice washing. So yeah, we're back. I need to, I really want to chill and do nothing. Cause I kind of like just, I'm just by myself today and there's nobody around. And it'd be a good time to just chill and do nothing. But there's a lot that needs to be done. I need to paint a couple of these boards for the storage unit. I really wanted to mount the storage stuff tonight. And I think I could do it by myself, but I mean, these things are hefty. They're probably, I don't know, 80 pounds, 70 pounds, 60 pounds. I don't know, they're kind of heavy. Um, and I've got to get screws for them. The goal was to get all this, the storage stuff hung today. So I need to finish painting a couple of these. So that's what I'm gonna do first. So I only painted the ones like on the outside edges black. So those are the only ones you're gonna see from like possibly underneath the bus. The rest of it's gonna be gray. And it's primarily just cause that, that paint that I was using is like $35 a gallon. And it's good stuff. It's like Rust-Oleum enamel. So it's a really thick kind of paint. And I'm trying to use a lot of that for the outside of the bus. So those are painted, the rest of it's painted. I should just get this one buttoned up so I can get the rest of these boards out in there. Get this water tank in there. And just kind of like clean up this area a bit. So I think that's gonna be the most effective. So yeah, I'm gonna try to mount this storage box under the bus. I don't have my brackets or bolts yet, so I've got to make a trip to the store. But let me see if I can at least get it up there. This handy dandy tool, with this handy dandy lever thingy, the stand jack, the jack stand, and its brother, the other one. It's like a new day. It's a new day because of this thingy and then this thingy. And the reason being is because this is too far over. And on the inside, we've got like that wall, the actual bus wall, and it's like an inch and a half thick. And this bar is an inch and a half thick. So if I were to screw in the center of it, I'd screw in the center of that wall and I can't get a bolt over there. So I had to put in this brace to kind of like zip it up on this side. I'm tired, it's been hot. This one is pretty much well in. I'm gonna add more bolts. I've only got four in currently, and I'm sure four is probably fine. At least that's what the internet says for the load ratings and everything. So I'm gonna end up doing one, two, three. Probably do four on the back, four on the front, one, two, three, 
into the actual frame of the bus, just cause like, why not? And then that should be enough. Like my only concern is if the great water tank is full, it's a 60 gallon tank. So that's gonna weigh like just under 600 pounds with the 20 pound propane tank. So like, that's a lot of weight. And then I'm gonna add the boards. So just this box alone, I'm expecting to weigh like 60 to 70 pounds. And then on top of that, 600 pounds plus 20, 620. So we're looking at like 700 pounds of load underneath the right side of the bus. And that's just when the gray water tank is full. I will probably not, never let it get that full. I probably drained it at like half, which is like 300 pounds. It's a lot more manageable. I'm pre-drilling through the iron with a eighth inch bit. And then I'm making my way all the way up to a three eighths bit. And then the three eighth bit is going up through the subfloor. But now I'm just gonna drill all these holes and then go on the inside and drop in some more bolts. So let's get to that. So I made these. So I made these washers and I got the idea from Nautical Nomads, Na Na Nomads Nautical, I think it's Nautical Nomads. Um, they were putting their gray water tanks underneath the bus and he was putting this bolt to the top. He was like, I, I use this flat iron as a washer because it's more, it's like stronger and thicker than a regular washer. I was like, that's a solid idea. So these are my washers and they're actually doing a really bomb job. Like they cover so much more surface than a regular washer and it didn't cost me anything. So I'm like, shoot, why not? That's what I'm doing, that's how I did it. So I'm not like a super huge guy, but uh, I could totally sleep in this thing. I mean, there's, there's just so much room in here. I fully underestimated the large mass of time it took to do this. This was a very big project, a lot bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I was like, oh, I'll just weld a couple things together, maybe run some bolts in, zip it on up. And uh, yeah, I was very, very mistaken. And then I wanted to paint all these pieces of plywood. I only used plywood because it was a lot cheaper. And the dimensions that I made this box, I did it like 29 inches wide. So I'd have to get like, I'd have to get a sheet for each side. So that would have been three sheets of metal. That would have come up to like $120 in just this one box. And that doesn't even include the front. So that's, that had to be $160 in sheet metal. I grabbed three quarter inch plywood for the bottom, a half inch for the back and sides. After I cut everything, I used a clear coat to kind of like give it a little bit more weather protection. And then I primed it and then we painted it like twice. So this thing is like definitely, it's gonna last a while. So I'm excited about it. But yeah, here, check it out. That was the goal. The goal was for it to carry a bunch of random tools, 20 pound propane tank, and then our 60 gallon gray water tank. And it can easily do all of that. I mean, there's still like a bunch of room in here to kind of put whatever we need to. I don't anticipate filling all the way up because we just don't have that much stuff, but I like it. It's eight feet by 20 inches by 29 inches. Whatever that is, it's like what, 16 square feet more? 
plus like the height. So it's like 40 cubic feet almost. That's a lot of stuff. Stuff that we're probably not even gonna use, but it's just good to have. That's the one for the back of the bus. That one is five feet by 20 inches, by I think like 27. I made that one a little shorter because there's a couple of like braces back there that I had to like work around. That one is primarily designed to hold a generator, which is the 3,500 watt generator, and then another 20 pound propane tank that'll feed our hot water system. That's the only reason I built these things is to hold those four items. I figured why not at least use the, all the space underneath the bus because it's just dead space anyway, so might as well. So if you guys have any questions, just shoot me a message. I love to kind of answer as much as I can. I appreciate you guys following along like it if you like it dislike it if you don't like it and if you could subscribe we'd really 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 appreciate it if you guys know anybody that needs any like video work for us or anything that we could possibly do to help them out please send them our way so yeah appreciate it guys